to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Just a reminder, if you're uh, tuning in on live through the Teams, um, the Teams is recorded. Uh, so if you participate, you're giving permission to be recorded. Um, and welcome back, Council and everyone. Nice to see you all in person. Yeah. And all of you way back there. Um, all right, we'll get started with approval of minutes first. Can I have approval of the June 9th regular meeting minutes, the June 17th special meeting minutes, and the June 23rd regular meeting minutes? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Sorry. It's going to go by quickly now. Yeah, it's going to save us five minutes. <laughs> Uh, first item on the agenda is the plan commission appointment. Um, as you all know, uh, Marty uh, Oosterbond stepped off of the plan commission and his uh, seat was a Democrat position appointed by town council president. We did have uh, someone submit a letter of interest for that position. Um, that person is been confirmed as a Democrat and that's Andy Strati. So I'd like to go ahead and appoint Andy to replace Marty for the remainder of Marty's term. So, um, and this is just for the planning commission? Yes, and it's a council president one, so oh, we don't okay. have to motion for it. Um, and then I know it's not on here, but we do have Marty also stepped off the MCEDC board. Right. So we're asking Karen to extend the deadline for getting letters of interest for that. We might want to put that out on social media wherever we can. Um, Bill had submitted a letter of interest, but the MCEDC bylaws do not let an elected official sit on their board. So we will have to appoint someone who's not elected um, and hopefully we'll get some letters of interest. And that's and that you don't have to be a Republican or Democrat. No. Right. No. It can be anybody. Yeah. Um, Sorry about that. That's all right. Do you want to put a deadline? Um, is, we're at the 14th. Do you want to do it by like the first meeting in August? Would that work? Okay. Um, in the meantime, uh, Jerry did. Jerry Chavez, let me know that if we want to send a rep like Jonathan to their next board meeting, if we don't have someone appointed by then, that one of us is welcome to listen in. We don't have voting authority until this body appoints someone, but right. they didn't want us to be out of the loop or anything like that. So um, next on the agenda is the handicap parking request on Winfield. Jonathan, do you want to fill us in on that? Sure, uh, we received a request to add a handicapped parking spot on the south side of Winfield Street. It would be across from the home at 204 Winfield. Um, there's no parking there on the north side uh, where the resident lives, but uh, they had requested that it be made available to them on the south side of the street there. Uh, the nearest property owner is 203 Winfield. And uh, so if you go 30 feet from the curb, um, or from the intersection, it would be basically in front of that house there at uh, 203 Winfield. I did talk to them and they were fine with the change and understood the situation with the with the neighbor and um, didn't have an issue with it at all. Uh, Wayne and Bob both reviewed as well and were in favor of it and said in the past when we've had a resident in a situation like this, we've generally been willing to make that change for. Um, I'm assuming Jim will need to do it by ordinance, but just wanted to get um, a motion to move forward with it maybe tonight, and then we would follow up with a change in the ordinance so it could be enforced. Jonathan, I think that the last time that we had that come up, we, the ordinance stated that it would remain handicapped until that person no longer needed it. And we can do that here again, yeah, and that'd that be fine. was also on Winfield Street, yep. and it's been yeah, Ed Pender oh, yeah. was still on council back then. Yeah, 10 years back, 12 years or more. Yeah. 
Jim, if that's the case, if we just want to make a temporary change, do we still want to change that in the parking schedule? Hmm. Uh, you know, if you're going to do a temporary one, you probably can get by without it. How how many how temporary is it going to be? <laughs> as long as she lives there, I don't know. I would assume. The last one was probably four or five years. Uh, you know, I can't remember the last time we just did a little short amendment, didn't we? Um, I think so. This one that Sally's talking about, I think that was before I was here. I'm not sure how you guys. It was. It was up yeah. on the, yeah. the other yeah. corner. Was, it was the other corner. Yeah. And, and you know, to make sure it's enforceable, you probably do a short amendment. Okay. And these people that are requested have been there 30 years anyway, so they're going to be yeah. there a while. So this is the this is the new house of soul. No, it's no, so the house next sold. to me on the corner. Oh, oh on that one. Okay. Yeah, right behind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. corner Plymouth. Yeah, I just I wonder about the other one because they yeah. have their own driveway right there. Okay. Got it. So I have a motion to approve authorizing Jonathan to move forward with creating the amended ordinance. So moved. I'll second. All in favor? Uh, aye. 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 Okay. Oh, excuse me, then Jonathan, you want me just to go ahead and draft that and Sure, that'd be great. Okay, thank you. All right. Next on the agenda, we have regional stellar plan update. Um, not a lot has changed since the last meeting. Uh, the Crossroads team has a meeting this coming Thursday. Basic uh, status of each other on the projects, where they're at. Um, probably the project most affecting Culver at this point is the message board project. I think I told you guys we applied for the COVID grant, received that, so that project is underway. Um, and our location would be out there by the school. Um, right well, the school. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> uh, any other updates for regional? No. So we'll move to stellar plan update with Jonathan. Um, see here, uh, Bob and I met with reps from Troyer Group, Culver Community Schools, and Thomas Excavating and Welding. We did a walkthrough in the punch list at Cavalier Park. Um, one thing that came up was setting public hours for the park and there uh, it is, uh, it remains Culver Community School property with a recreational easement on it. We didn't work out the times ahead of time and we, Karen's asked for 5 a.m. to 10 p.m. daily, which I don't have any issues with. It's mainly about when to lock the restroom more than anything. So um we'll proceed with that um the only concern really that i had after the walkthrough is just the timing of the landscaping and seating um with things being a little behind they just kind of finished that in july obviously we had some really hot weather as that went down and don't expect it to do uh incredibly well but uh we mentioned that with thomas and they their approach was just to recommend that we uh, move forward with it uh come back and receive in the fall when it be a little cooler if there's any uh, spots that are kind of patchy. So that's the plan there. Um, one thing we dropped off from that project from the original quote was a uh, sign. Uh, the original sign design was very nice, but also very expensive. And uh, in interest in the interest of budget, uh, we left that out knowing that we would need to put some sort of sign there in the future. Um, and what we came up with was there are some existing signs around the high school um, that are a lot less expensive uh, one to match that with just basically Cavalier Park. Um, I think the logos of the town, the park, uh, Culver Community Schools and Okra, noting that it was a stellar funded project and the hours. Uh, I've got a quote from that from Van Adco to match those existing ones for $1,200. Request a motion to approve that or any discussion on it. I'll make a motion to approve that. If you'll tell me the hours again. 5 a.m. to 10 p.m. 5 a.m.? Yes. I'll second that motion. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 And we have a proposed contract addendum from Troyer Group, and that's for the State Road 10 sidewalk, Sidewalks Project. Uh, it's basically kind of moving some funds around from the original uh, engineering agreement we signed with them a couple years ago, the total will decrease by $2,900 with the addendum. 
um, but they're shifting some funds that had been originally budgeted in there for right of way engineering to preliminary engineering and uh, reducing the overall cost by $2,900. So I would ask for a motion to approve the contract addendum with Troyer Group. So moved. Second. I have to abstain, but I'll call for the vote. I mean, is that, and so the total amount is 69,000 now? I believe that's correct, yeah. 69923. Yeah. Let's have that in a minute. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. We got somebody waiting here. Was, was that Rich and Sally? Was that Rich and yeah. Sally? Did those? Okay. Yeah. I just write down there. Uh, last stellar item is just at the Beach Lodge. We're awaiting on the donor tree. I talked to Amber today, it sounds like. Uh, they have it in stock now, but like we mentioned with Cavalier Park, they're recommending that they hold on to it until September and plan it then. So I think it'll do a little better in September. I don't have an issue with that. Uh, hopefully we'll work out the, we have an invoice um, for basically uh, everything at Cav Cavalier Park at the Beach Lodge to wrap everything up. Uh, held off on approving it, waiting on, again, that information on the donor tree. And then um, the lock system, and uh, that came in Thursday. I have to catch up with Rich, so I don't know. Um, so we had a couple small items there, but they have sent in the last uh, invoice for the beach lodge. So to get with you at some point, and we can see what if everything's been completed to satisfaction or not. Yeah, we can walk through this. Sounds good. Um, so that's all I have for Stellar Update. All right, we'll go on to town manager's report. Uh, Jenny and I and uh, Jim Clevenger and um, Buzz Crone uh, met with NIPSCO legal and PR staff uh, last week on our municipal utility um, project. Uh, we had a discussion with them. I, I don't think there was a lot of interest in pursuing it on their end. Uh, we did follow up with some emails with Buzz and um, some legal contacts that he has uh that there may be an opportunity for us to continue to pursue it but at the first meeting nipsco was not particularly excited about the opportunity i don't think uh anything you'd add yeah. to that jenny um no we just would like to have an executive meeting with the council before the next regular meeting uh, because we're going to have a couple more meetings we want to be able to update you on where we're at but Jim has told us that we can do that in executive session because it um, involves possible acquisition of the utility. Right. So um, if it's possible, we'd like to do it before the next regular meeting. Jim would um, attend either on Teams or in person, but we just want to make sure you guys are up to date. Um, and we'll also fill you in on how this follow-up conversation goes. So if that work, does that work for you guys like a five o'clock executive maybe? Two weeks from now? Yeah, yeah. Just a private meeting. Yeah. And we could possibly, you think we could do 5.30, Jonathan and Jim? For that executive, do you want a, a good hour, Jim? Well, you know, a lot's gonna depend, I suppose, on what we hear tomorrow. I think you can do it though in an hour. Okay. And I certainly would plan to be there. I, um, I I think what needs to be said, we need to, you know, talk about it and get make sure everybody knows what's going on. Okay, we can extend this table a little further out <laughs> for another person at it. Um, so five thirty then. Leave an hour. Okay. Thanks, you guys. Uh, this is Jim Clevenger interrupting again. Karen, did you, did you get the uh, information from Jonathan for the executive session notice, and are you going to send that out, or do you want me to? I can take care of it. Okay, I, I think I cited the statute uh, for for Jonathan if you need it. Okay, I'll get it. Okay, great, thanks. Um, next up, I have a quote from EJP that uh, Bob got for us for the remaining meters and radio units for switching all water meters over to radio read units. Uh, it's a mix of 
again, um, some meters that would just be used for replacements, some that uh, uh, mostly radio units, I think, are what was on that. Uh, but it was 175 different units of different types, uh, and the total was $30,350. Um, and I, that's a split between water and sewer. And again, this would be enough to leave update all of our. All of our meters to the radio. Come on, Nelly. It's not fun to solve them. So, yeah, they're both solid, but there's a little bit more. So. Do you have a motion to approve? So move. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 I think at the last meeting I mentioned working on a uh, paving list for community crossings grant, and then I think right about that time they came out and said those are delayed, um, possibly postponed until next year. We'll see just due to gas tax funding being limited this year. So we'll hold off on uh, doing anything with that list for now. But uh, from this year's list, we did get uh, our invoice from EMB paving. And as they're here doing our paving list, they uh, we typically provide a patch list once they're here and, and keep it up to date. So they did a total of 10 patches for us while they were here. Uh, one was for the fire department. The other nine were all from water leaks or repairs and would come out of the, the water fund. And again, I asked for a motion to approve the invoice from EMB paving for $12,200. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 And we received notice that the governor extended the prohibition on utilities disconnects. And um, I, I guess it's just, is it on late fees as well, Karen, or just disconnects? OK, so asking the council, you know, we had um, extended ours out until July, but now asking just that we follow what the state recommendation or requirements are and, and uh, extend our moratorium on late fees and utility disconnects until August 14th. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 And our, our hiring committee for the EMS position uh, met last week and we did a couple interviews today. Uh, we'll have another one um, sometime next week and uh, we'll be following up with uh, checking references, things like that. And we hope to make a recommendation maybe at the next council meeting, uh, the last one in July or the first one in August at the latest. So um, Bill and Sally have been serving on that. And so we'll keep moving forward with that. Uh, on the trash and recycling contract, um, Jim, I'll defer to your recommendation here. We had kind of two options. Uh, they sent us basically just an extension of our current contract with the new price on it. Uh, we could do that for another 30 days if we need to, or if you're comfortable with the language in the revised um, version, I'd ask for approval of that tonight if you're comfortable with it. Yes, you didn't get my email apparently. I dropped you this afternoon saying I was comfortable with the okay. version. Um, I had a, a, some added things to this new contract. It probably was always the case that uh, Republic could refuse certain waste uh, if they found it, I, I assume, or whatever the case might be. Um, and obviously, man, the new contract says if we refuse it in town, you deal with it. Well, if they're not going to be able to deal with it, we sure can't deal. With it. Um, and I don't know whether in our ordinance establishing the requirement that the homeowners pay share of this contract, that if there's language in there about um, them taking responsibility for waste that's uh, not accepted by Republic Services. Uh, if there's not, or if there's not a separate ordinance somewhere to do that, we may want to consider adding or, or doing something so that we put that back on the homeowner if there's, um, if, if there's going to be uh, waste that's excluded under the contract. All right. Uh, with that note, I'd ask for a motion to approve the new trash and recycling contract with Republic Services. Do you have the amount of 
Um, you want to put it there, didn't it? Yeah, so I'm not, we're not changing the public rate at all tonight, but right, I think it went from 14, 1409 to $15 even, I believe okay. was the change. That's correct, it's $15. But it's not, that's just what we're paying, not what the For now. Public's the same? Right. Yes. Okay, we're worth it, okay. Just before we approve the contract, I mean, Jim, do you want to make that, that change to the contract or negotiate that before we approve this one and just do a temporary extension? That was not uh, Well, uh, I pointed that out initially with some of my other comments that the uh, Republic went ahead and revised and made some corrections on. And I'm guessing that uh, they're not interested in <laughs> modifying that part because those the, the waste provisions were still in this contract i i didn't reread it again jim but uh after we sent i sent your notes to them basically and they made some changes uh, our account representative basically said on that section their biggest concern is if it gets rejected from the landfill they want us to assist them and as much as we can and figuring out where it actually came from so that they can and, and Jonathan, they did make all those revisions. Okay. Uh, they you know, if they don't discover it uh, and they have to deal with it, they'll they'll get rid of it. But if they get charged a higher fee because of the hazardous nature of the uh, waste, then they're looking for us to uh, re on that. And they have language in the in the contract that says they'll make an, they'll assist in trying to determine you know, source of the excluded waste. So um, it, it seemed to me that, uh, that, you know, they were trying to accommodate us in, in to some, and uh, I, I, don't, <laughs> I, I don't know what else we could probably do under the circumstances other than it's probably not going to be something that's going to come up. I, I'm not sure what, what would constitute excluded waste, uh, but that it's it seems to be pretty extraordinary okay rich seconded the motion to approve the contract mm -hmm. who was the first was it the cell okay all in favor uh, aye. 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 my last <laughs> item is special event requests for uh i think there's three things a library sponsored cemetery walk that would be on september 19th sidewalk sales uh, which would close uh, Main Street from Thursday evening, July 23rd until July 26th, and a park and lake scavenger hunt on July 25th. Take a motion for all three or one at a time, however you want to do it. I'll make a motion to approve all three. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 That's all I have. All right, thanks, Jonathan. Any questions for Jonathan, you guys? All right, next we'll go to department head reports. I'm gonna skip the EMS, assuming there's no report there. Um, Ken, are you on the call tonight for fire? No, you got you got second best Pete here tonight. Hi, Pete. <laughs> Hello, hey, uh, I appreciate you letting me speak for Ken. Uh, he's out of town for a few days. Um, just a very few things we got on the, um, the docket today I'd like to uh, express to the town and town council is uh, very pleased with the patch that uh, EMB did at the uh, station in our parking lot. Uh, before that, I think it was a little subpar, but uh, it looks very nice now and very functional. Uh, also in that same vein, I'd like to uh, thank Bob and his crew at the street department for helping us replace the, uh, the bell at the uh, fire station on our honor wall. Uh, the uh, hand hewed timbers uh, finally gave up the ghost and uh, we had to replace them and uh, quite the heavy project and they uh, were uh, very, very good at their, their uh, help and uh, got it up very fast. Uh, we also uh, voted as a department uh, in lieu of the uh, fire fest. Uh, it's not a huge fundraiser for us every year, but we like, we voted to uh, uh, hold a raffle in place of that uh, event, uh, just to get us through the, the year. Um, so that's, uh, you know, just, uh, never replace our fire fest, but we're just, uh, trying to do maybe replace some funds. Uh, and last but not least, the, uh, latest on the, uh, aerial, uh, ladder truck, uh, is, uh, 
They've got gra graphics on it now. Uh, they've uh, done painting and uh, installing some doors. Uh, best guess right now, it's going to be probably late in the month of August. So uh, it's, it's still going, but uh, as everything else uh, in this uh, environment, things are just maybe a little slower than usual. That's all I had. Thanks, Pete. Any questions? Question on the raffle. Um, are there any restrictions on doing that? Uh, is it town departments or how does that work? They may have to apply for, uh, what do you call it? The, Permit. Yeah, I think Indiana requires you to get that. If you're not a, it may require if you're not a, a property organization. That's why I just want to make sure we're. Yeah. So I support the idea. That's something the fire department has to do. Yes. Yeah. Pete, let us know if you need it. Let me know if you need any help um, navigating that. Yeah, absolutely. Thank right. you very much. Okay. Thanks, Pete. Thanks for filling in for Ken. Uh, Wayne, I think Anytime. you're on too. Hello. Hi, Wayne. How's it going? I don't. I don't currently work. Okay. Uh, anything we're working on, pretty much. Yeah. Busy weekend over the fourth. A lot of people here. How did it go? We'll get that report. Later. <laughs> Thanks, Wayne. You're welcome. <laughs> well, that was clear as mud. Amber, are you on the call for the park? Yeah, I'm here. Hi. Hello. Um, yeah, nothing really to report. Uh, had our second concert over the past weekend. It went really well, so. Yeah, thanks to everybody coming out and supporting those. But yeah, nothing other than that. Okay. Any questions for Amber or Wayne, you guys? I keep forgetting to ask that. <laughs> I'm nope. used to the Zoom calls too. All right. Anything else? Bob, are you on the call? I am. I have nothing for you this evening. All right. Thanks, Bob. Uh, boards and commissions. Is anyone on the call for the plan commission or BCA? Uh, Pete Peterson's off the planning commission. Really nothing to report. Uh, we plan on holding our next meeting uh, this month. Uh, same, uh, uh, I guess, uh, establishment you guys are doing one tonight. So hopefully that'll go off without a hitch. Okay. Thanks, Pete. Uh, any report from the CRC? Just that our next meeting is Monday the 20th. Um, at 5 p.m. At this time, it's scheduled for here at the library. I'm looking for that when the agenda is published. All right. Is so anyone on the call for the Tree Commission? Sounds like we can move to the clerk's report. Okay. I have several uh, claims over 1500 for your approval. As Jonathan mentioned earlier, actually, I guess we don't have to see the EMB paving one for 10,200. Um, travelers R and D is the fire, the workers, workers compensation for the fire department, and that's $1,998. Then there's Thomas excavating for 31,836.10, and the second one for Thomas for 35,446.37. One was from May, I believe, and the other from June. Um, and then finally, Live Oak Electric, $2,351.38 for some repairs at the park. I think we approve the plan number 15. All in favor? Aye. 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 Um, and then can I get the approval for the May financial reports? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 And Bill, I do have June ready. So do you want to have June ready? Yeah. Um, the sidewalk program has been a roller coaster this year. Um, we had another sidewalk applicant withdraw their application, which freed up a little bit more money. And I had another I have an, another applicant on the waiting list. 
Um, they put in for a curb and sidewalk project, which would be the two separate separated by the outline. Um, we have enough money to do the sidewalk program, uh, the sidewalk, and they were OK just doing that portion of the project. Um, and so that project would be eight hundred twenty five dollars um, and we can do that without going over the twelve thousand that we budgeted. So if I could just get approval for that. Question on that term, what would be the additional amount necessary to do both? If we, if we were to um, supplement the sidewalk. I don't know if I have that information on this thing. Just um, I don't have that. I think I deleted it because okay. I was just, I know it would put us in the um, okay. It would be, be probably another $800. So, but they were fine with just the one. Motion to approve. Madison, this is Russ Mason. Yes. Yeah, I I think Bob needs to check that sidewalk that went in on the corner of College and Forest Place. I don't think there's a handicap access to that yeah. to that sidewalk. You're correct, Russ. There was an issue there, and and they're working on it. They're getting it fixed. Oh, thank you, Jonathan. Yep. Uh, was there a motion to approve the new sidewalk? I think Bill, you send the. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Um, the town wide garage sales start on Thursday. I got the map out earlier this evening. Um, maps will be available around town. And we're doing this uh, in conjunction with the Lions Club estate sales. Um, I did put a note on there just to keep in mind social distancing, wear a map, you know, be respectful, wear a mask if you're asked to, and keep your hands sanitized. So hopefully we can um, do our part. Uh, cleanup day is scheduled, still scheduled for July 25th. Um, let's see, the AIM Medical Trust, uh, they're a central part of the trust. They do have a board of trustees, and they are currently um, in the process of electing a new trustee member. There was just one nomination, and that was for Warsaw Mayor Joe Thalmer. And um, so they're requesting about be completed by the council president on behalf of the council for that. Um, trustee position. So if I could just have a motion to um, approve Jimmy basically signing the ballot and submitting it, that would be All in favor? Aye. Aye. And finally, I'm getting into Jonathan's status. <laughs> um, <laughs> I can't wait to go there. Um, I'd like to schedule a work session if possible uh, to discuss the salary ordinance. I'd really like to talk the salary ordinance and get that down first for once and then um, and then hit the budget. So if we could uh, do a salary ordinance session the week of August 2nd and then review budgets um, Monday and Tuesday, the week of August 10th. Um, I don't I don't anticipate a ton of change on budgets just due to the different factors that we have going on. And then I should get information out to all of you by Thursday. Okay. I'm sure anticipating no a reduction in revenue. Yeah, there's going to be a reduction in that one. Yeah. So I'm not anticipating budgets are going to change up that much, is what I was trying to say. So, but I also, they, I think the department has been also getting some guidance from you. Um, as far as salaries, so. um, okay, so August 2nd, that week, a work session. Mm -hmm. Do you guys want to do whatever that Tuesday is, just to keep it on our normal? Fourth is Tuesday. Uh, five o'clock type of thing. Yes. Okay. Does that work for you today? I think Monday, August 10th, I think we could do another five o'clock. Okay. And then, um, then Tuesday at five o'clock as well, which we get there. Okay. So both sessions on the 10th and 11th. And then you have the regular meeting. Is that work for you guys? All right. I will get notices out and include you. Okay. That's all right. Thank you. All right. Thanks, Karen. Uh, attorney's report, Jim? Uh, yeah, it's just one thing, and it's a uh, summary of the email that I sent to the council last Thursday concerning our 415 Lakeshore lien foreclosure. 
the attorney for Mr. Van Hawk uh, and the 27 Group Inc. and all of the other plaintiffs uh, that gave us tort claim notice on 415 Lakeshore and filed suit at 614 College Avenue, uh, withdrew her appearance. Um, I, I think what prompted that probably was that we served her with service for the 27 Group Inc. because I, we have not been able to serve the resident agent because the corporation is uh, administratively dissolved. The registered agent doesn't isn't there, doesn't accept service. Uh, so um, we're back to a publication notice on the 27 Group Inc. I've asked Jonathan to post uh, no, a notice uh, at the site. And uh, so we'll have to wait <clears throat> a little while while that uh, circulates through the uh, newspapers um, before we can uh, proceed with, at this point, I had a motion for default ready to proceed. But uh, in any event, uh, more uh, shell games uh, being played by our friend and uh, we'll, keep, we'll keep after them. And if any of you have any questions, feel free to uh, contact me and uh, we'll, we'll go from there. That's all I have. Thank you, Jim. Um, I'm assuming there's no one on the call on that end for utility shutoff or ordinance violation. So we'll move on to citizen input. We'll start with this new citizen input here in the room. Okay, any citizen input on the phone call? All right. Go on to council issues. Rich, council issues. Um, question for Karen. Um, I understand the chamber has some in town for the supplemental staffing on the 4th of July. That's what I understand. Yes. For public information, I think that's going to express the appreciation of the chamber for stepping up. Yeah, thank you, Rich. Um, Sally, any council issues? I do not have any. All right, Bill, any council I issues? I do not have any. Bill? Okay. All right, I, I have might a couple have, really quick ones. I might have a message in the chat box. Oh, Sorry. okay. Yeah, check that out while we're. Um, so I, I think I forwarded you guys an email from the academies about their plan for opening up, bringing students back. Um, I wanted to let you know the comment on from over there called. And um, as you're aware, they're testing students as they arrive and uh, faculty and staff. They have a number of machines to do the testing and that um, particular type of machine gives results right away. And so days later. Um, and I had asked the commandant, you know, are these expensive machines? What's what's the type of investment? And he said they're not really that expensive as you would guess, but that each test has a, an associated cost. And of course, if you're testing 800 students, that would add up. Um, and so I expressed an interest in finding out more information about that in the event we would want to invest in a machine to test our employees. Um, you do have to be certified to test and you have to be associated with like a, a a clinic or a center, and I don't know if our EMS could service that. I thought we'd do a little research and at least look into it um, because it would be one of those cases where if Wayne wanted to test the officers, you know, on a quarterly basis or something, or the EMTs wanted to test, some of the people who work with the public on a regular basis could be easily, quickly tested. Um, but like I said, I don't know the cost. I thought I would at least try to get that information and bring it back here. As an alternative or a plan beyond that, we explore as a contract for services, um, do we have the academy do it? They're training the staff, they have all the equipment. They probably have a pretty good reach, some of the academies, the provider of the services. If they would do it, especially since our EMS and um, fire includes all these services and events there, um, if they would do it on a contract with services or test basis for us. Yeah, we could definitely ask what that would look like. After like an interlocal agreement, you know, inter, yeah. Inter, yeah. Interlocal well, agreement. particularly because they're going to have several machines that are constantly operating and they've already got the certification in the, in the medical center. 
So yeah, we'll definitely look into that. I just wondered if that would be of interest to you guys, you know, if, if we should. And um, and then I had, uh, I'm gonna forward the information to you. I talked to Karen um, a couple weeks ago about getting some information together. You know, we did the utility relief um, for small businesses. It wasn't real costly to the town to provide some uh, relief funds for those businesses. And I'm interested in looking at what that would look like if we were to do the same thing for the two schools and perhaps larger businesses like ACPI, maybe Portside Marina, the ones that would not have qualified when we did the small business utility relief. And so Kieran provided me a nice spreadsheet. She took like Miller's, the schools, some of the bigger businesses, mapped out what their utility costs are for some of the months that we did the small business relief. Um, I thought that if we can afford to, and it makes sense that maybe we consider that for the schools, especially because uh, as we know, Culver Academies is taking a huge revenue hit. I think the public school is probably going to have a very tight budget, um, considering the state is already talking about funding cuts and that sort of thing. Um, so Karen put together some great data that I thought I forward on you guys to review it, think about it. We can, you know, put it on the agenda for our next meeting. I didn't want to ask everyone to look at it tonight and make a decision really quickly because I think it's something to think about. Um, I know, you know, the Academy stepped up to contribute to our fire truck um, and I know they're going through a rough time right now because of, of all of all of this COVID response. Um, and I'm sure some of these other businesses are just like the smaller businesses were. So um, thank you, Kieran, for putting all of that together. It's a nice thorough bird's eye view. Uh, and I'll just forward you that email or, or have Karen send it back out. Um, and I think. Um, oh, and then I did want to bring up what a, uh, somebody who doesn't live here, but who used to have a student at Culver Academies, uh, belongs to several of the social media pages that the Culver parents are on. Um, and they've expressed concern about whether Culver is safe and bringing their kids back to campus and uh, that sort of thing. And she had reached out to me and also Bill on uh, Messenger on social media and had a discussion about, you know, is Culver being safe? And, and for the most part, I feel like if you look up our zip code, we have very few cases as far as the percentage across the county. Um, but Bill and I kind of talked a bit about encouraging the businesses to encourage wearing masks. Some of the businesses are asking people to wear a mask, some are not. Um, and I don't know if this council, you know, at some point wants to consider mandating it on a local level, or if right now we should just reach out to the businesses and see if um, most of them are seeing mask wearing, if not, would they be willing to encourage it with signage or you know whatever the case may be? I kind of wanted to get thoughts on that here at council because uh, I know I'm getting approached about it. I'm sure some of you are as well. Jenny and I talked about this, like she said, and my thought process was that over the next couple of weeks, we would, you know, each and every one of us as we go on these local businesses, whether it be parking shop, possible uh, you know, just ask the local business managers would they be uh, opposed to putting signage up uh, on their front door that states, uh, you know, please wear a mask if you're going to enter our establishment and let the businesses uh, police the masking. I mean, we're not going to be the mask police and, you know, it would be up to the business. The customer comes in and doesn't have a mask on, you know, to say something to that person, you know, we're happy to have your business when you please go back and put a mask on and we just kind of do a. Uh, I, I, I support the initiative. I wonder if we might ask the chamber to do this though. I mean, it's really the chamber is going to relation. I mean, we all 
for some relationship to right. each of the businesses. But I wonder, from a, a more organized perspective, if we ask the chamber to take that on and to um, and communicate that to the businesses, and then perhaps as the chamber, or in addition to, us, to yeah, come back to us with a suggestion or recommendation. Yeah. Um, like yeah. I said, formalized business looking for it sounds good. Um, I mean, I, I support it. I think we can use it. Not even lax. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's fine. I mean, I just think. Because, you know, look, we're getting ready to let the academy's coming back, schools are coming back, uh, we got another big holiday coming up of uh, Labor Day where we're going to have an influx of people. And we just saw what the influx of people did here over the uh, 4th of July, and, you know, we're right now in, in really an incubation period to see what ha happens after every one of here. So, Jenny and I thought that this would be something we could, you know, talk about and bring up and look at next meeting. But, yeah, I think we could ask the chamber to see if they might want to put some messaging out, talk to the business owners. Might be a good time for us to put a message out to the public too. It's been sure. a while. We could go by the, you know, explain that phase five is coming up. I think they extended phase four into a 4.5. Remind people that um, masks would be appreciated. And I think that's what was trying to do. Yeah. Yeah. So maybe we put a message out on Friday, you know, explaining what phase five means and what the concerns are. And the county has definitely seen an uptick. And we wouldn't be asking these uh, businesses to provide the masks. It would be up to the individual to get back out to their vehicle or whatever and put the mask and put on and pull it out of the commercial pocket. Yeah, I mean, it, I see it in some stores. I see a lot of people with it on, and then in others, no one. I guess it just depends on where you're at. And, um, but and we do have a lot of out of town people that come to town on the weekends, obviously. I've heard, I mean, not from a lot of those people, but I've heard from a number of them that they're surprised when they come to town and nobody's wearing masks, mm -hmm. and so they don't do it. Mm -hmm. I mean, coming from Indianapolis, they're coming from Chicago, and when you're more familiar with people wearing masks in, in public areas and they're sort of surprised that they don't see it here and so they don't do it here. And what we're trying to do right now is to be proactive rather than reactive That's right. along with the chamber and I think it's something that benefits all of us. Yeah, I was in Indianapolis over the weekend and I, I saw a lot of masks. One store I was in, I don't think I saw anyone without one. So yeah. I thought that was really interesting. Mm -hmm. Okay, anything else you guys? I just got one other thing I'd like to mention. I'd like to thank Colleen. She's here tonight. I want to thank the library and Colleen for letting us use the tour. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah it's a lot easier to spread yeah, out in here. It is. Anything else from the online group? Jonathan, you saw something? Yeah. Uh, Kevin is representing us on one of the um, Marshall County Stellar. Housing there. Okay. Hi guys. Um, the housing committee has been con continuing to meet, and the main thing we're looking at is the um, OOR program, which is owner occupied um, renovations. Uh, we are about to hire a um, consultant to start running that program. Where it's going to affect Culver is is we're going to be having a meeting in Culver coming up soon to um, look for houses and applicants to do this. I think it's something that's time to you know get out in the community a little bit on this. The other thing that I thought you guys should know, um, there was some debate at the meeting on how the money should be spent. Uh, there were a couple representatives that thought it should be divided by community but the majority basically decided it should be divided by need. So um, when the applications come in, in the end, they're going to be sorted instead of by community, by the most pressing need throughout the county. And um, we're looking at a lot of probably roofs, um, furnaces, leaking things like that, and critical things that need to be done immediately. But getting starting to get the word out in Culver and Marshall County that this is coming, so people can be thinking about um, who they need to contact that might be applicable, um, getting applicants lined up and and comfortable with making an application, 
And I know we're going to be talking to Jonathan soon about setting up a place to do this and, and how to get it started. But I thought you guys should be aware that it's, it's moving forward. It's probably going to be a longer term thing. So we will be going through the application process, doing those things this fall. But it's unlikely that we'll be able to get um, far enough along to get the money and get anything done this fall. But everything should be lined up to start projects first thing in the spring. Great. Thanks for the update, Kevin. You're um, welcome. I know there's some like uh, income thresholds that have to be met for that program. So we'll figure out how to communicate that out as well. Can't well, just part of my is how he is finding the right people because a lot of the people that would be applicable to this program may not be um, in, in touch with all the social media and some of the other things. So we kind of some of it's got to be done word of mouth. We just got to get it out in the community. Sure, sure. Okay. Um, anything else, you guys? A motion to adjourn the claims? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Great. Sign the paperwork and have a good night. <laughs> See you all in two weeks. See ya. Thanks. Thanks, Jim. Jonathan, uh, what you got? What you got going there, fella? I had yeah. a couple of days off. Come oh. on. Back. <laughs> Couldn't find your razor tonight, huh? Right. <laughs> All right. It's See awesome. you later. <laughs> See ya. <laughs> That's harsh. Golf course time? That's harsh. <laughs> <laughs>